back, folks. We got the S and P's right now as we continue to inch higher. Right now, you got the S and P's up 109 points. That's 2.2 percent to the upside. Nasdaq 100 now up 3.1 percent. We got the Dow up one and a quarter percent right now. And what a great day, man! We got a great interview coming up. We're going to jump over to our man Ed Egalinski, folks. Ed is a managing director with Direction, head of sales and distribution, head of alternative investments. To learn more about their products, you can always click on the Direction banner right on the front page at TFNN.com. And Ed, good afternoon. Quite a day, man. Great to talk to you. Thanks for coming on the program. Uh, a bull's delight today, for sure. Glad, glad are we, to be here. Are, are we going to have enough to talk about, man? Um, so I want to I talk to you about, you know, the market, the big picture of the market. Um, but boy, we got we to gotta kick things off with the action today. Just a blowout number. Um, I was reading earlier just in terms of ETFs and people plowing money in ETFs. Um, you know, I know you guys have the SOXL. That's, it's just dramatic. That was even referenced in the article I was talking about on Bloomberg. Um, but what do you think about this market, Ed? What do, you, what, do you think it's got some leg? What do you, what do you see in this market as we got quite the acceleration on the heels of those NVIDIA numbers last night? Yeah, as you know, uh, most of our trading vehicles are leveraged in inverse uh, we're agnostic in terms of the direction of the market. We let the traders decide that. But certainly uh, the bull camp is having its way today. Uh, you, as you mentioned, NVIDIA's blowout earnings last night, monetizing AI uh, has definitely uh, seen the stock skyrocket to yet another all-time high uh, and bring the semiconductor space with it as well. As you mentioned, uh, we have a triple leverage bull and bear uh, on the semiconductor uh, index, on the NYSE semiconductor index, SOXL on the bull side, uh, SOXS on the bear side. Uh, and the same thing with NVIDIA, we're seeing a lot of flows pre and post earnings, not just in the one and a half times bull NVIDIA product we have, which is NVDU, uh, but also on the bear side, some people may be trying to hedge some profits or think that uh, the valuations are stretched uh, so we have a bear non-leverage for those traders uh, as well. So uh, we're seeing a lot of flows today in general. Uh, we have this year, uh, but the preponderance of the move continues to be on the bullish side, uh, particularly with the mega cap names. Uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of flows in our leverage and inverse single stock ETFs, not just NVIDIA. Uh, but we have six of the seven magnificent seven single stocks available, uh, either if you think the bull market's going to continue one and a half times bull, or uh, if you think that uh, these individual stocks might slow down on the bear side, non leverage bear. The only one we don't have is Meta of, of the magnificent seven on the single stock. Okay. And I know investors are falling in love with those single stock ETFs, especially with the exposure. I mean, reading about them today for NVIDIA, my goodness, the numbers even, uh, it's a record day, right? $250 billion added to market cap. Never been done before. That's where we sit right now. They'll probably finish somewhere in that ballpark as you're up uh, pretty dramatically, to put it lightly. Um, so we jump from that. Of course, we have the bigger picture of the Fed in focus to some degree. This economy just chugs on with earnings. We saw it last night. We saw it with some of the bigger tech companies out there in terms of just pretty decent beats across the board trading higher, even though the bar has been pretty high. Um, but how do you look at the picture, Ed, going a little bit big picture when we talk about the CPI? We've had some hot inflation numbers. We now get the market you know, accelerating even higher. Um, how do you look at that for traders with the S&P, you know, sitting at 5,100 right now, um, as we still are dealing with inflation in this market, we still have a Fed that's that's pretty tight right now. Now, that can be debatable, of course. Um, but how do you how do you look at that with with traders potentially positioning themselves with with, uh, you know, the CPI inflation still out there as one of those variables in focus? Yeah, certainly the CPI and the PPI last week. Uh, you know, gave some bond uh, traders some pause in terms of the timing of the Fed deciding maybe to start cutting rates. If you look at the Fed fund futures based on the minutes yesterday, the Fed minutes, uh, it seems like it's being pushed out further into the year in terms of potential rate cuts. What we're seeing is, again, from short term traders, uh, is uh, trading the contrarian uh, trade right now, which is TMF, which is our triple leverage 20 plus year treasury. Uh, for those of you familiar with TLT, uh, we're, we're triple leverage using 
uh, that ETF and what's called the swap on an ETF to get that bullish exposure. Uh, but, you know, the bears have won so far this year. We have TMV, which is the triple leverage on the 20 plus year treasury bear. Um, so we're, we're seeing contrarian inflows in terms of bucking the trend, uh, thinking that rates will start coming down from a short term perspective. We also have the seven to 10 year people could trade as well, a little bit on the shorter end of the curve. Uh, but the path of least resistance right now looks like interest rates continuing to climb. Uh, I think a technical level around the, on the 10 year is probably around four and a half percent could be our our next stop. Uh, how does that affect equities? Uh, I don't have to tell anybody in your audience. Uh, certainly, it's going to be less vulnerable to the MAG-7 or the tech sector, which has more uh, cash uh, on their balance sheets. We're probably, if rates continue to go up, might hit a little bit of the small cap stocks that, that tend to need more cash uh, and, and tend to borrow more. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable, man. I was just taking a look at that 10-year when you were talking about it. I mean, it's, it's remarkable how often... The market has kind of gotten ahead of the Fed this go around and then and then it reprices. And then in the span of almost two or three weeks, we're having an entire different conversation somehow in this market. Uh, but boy, those those magnificent seven, they just power through no matter what uh, it seems like the interest rates are doing right now. You know, you go from there and of course, inflation is persistent. And then you take a look at I was wondering if I could get your take maybe on how you know, commodities as we go towards, you know, traders, of course, the dollars had a lot of volatility recently. That, of course, on the heels of the yields like you're talking about. But for traders, we got a bunch of traders, whether it's in gold, of course, um, but many different commodities in our trading room uh, for traders looking to take advantage of maybe those moves in commodities we're getting based off, whether it's the dollar, whether it's the commodities themselves. Um, what are you seeing out there, Ed? You seeing anything there? Well well, it's interesting. The dollar strengthening, definitely there's an inverse relationship between the commodity gold uh, and, and the dollar, and you're seeing that this year. But what's interesting is that from a trader's perspective, when you look at gold mining stocks, uh, some of you might be familiar with GDXJ uh, or GDX, we have leveraged versions of that 2X bull and bear. Uh, and what's interesting is that the gold mining stocks have performed much worse than gold itself. So a lot of our traders uh, are trading the gold mining stocks. They have a high beta associated with it. So traders love to trade something uh, with high beta associated with it. Uh, but uh, the trend has been lower with uh, the gold mining stocks. And I think part of the reason is that interest rate narrative climbing, uh, they definitely are more capital driven, need infusion of capital, uh, and also have a lot more uh, in terms of debt on their balance sheets. Uh, so that's probably adversing, uh, adversely affecting gold mining stocks even more than the metal itself. In regards to crude oil, it's been the opposite. Uh, crude oil has risen. I think part of that has been the geopolitical risk, whether it's the Black Sea, the Red Sea. Uh, there's a lot of supply chain potential issues uh, and the ongoing uh, conflict, uh, unfortunately, in the Middle East. Uh, so you're seeing crude oil rally a little bit this year relative to the energy stocks. Uh, but we are seeing both activity in our 2X bull and bear, uh, the energy select sector index, ERX, ERY. Yeah, it's pretty wild, man. Um, and that was a quick nine minutes, Ed. Yeah, ERX, I got up here, 59.23, that crude market sitting at 78. Ed, this was great having you on, man. That was great information on quite a busy day in the market. And we look forward to having you on uh, in the future as well. I know we're setting up those interviews. We look forward to yep. it, man. Thank you so much. Hope to see you again soon. Take care. Have a good you day. You as well. Are you Folks, ready to take tuned? your